program, I would like to go ahead and add some example data, which we're going to use throughout the course. And I would like to show you the stock market data set. You can simply Google that. And here's Kaggle, which provides some uh, data sets we can use. Um, you may have to create an account to download these, um, but you can find the stock market data set. So what this is, is someone has scraped the Yahoo Finance um, data and created data sets for us, which we can use. Now down here is the data explorer and we can see which files are available. So for example, we have in the stocks folder, we have a, a CSV file called AAPL, which is this one. It's the stock market data from the Apple company. And we can simply download this CSV file into uh, onto our laptops. And what we'll get is basically a tar. So we can see it here in the downloads. So I can unzip, so it's a zip file. We do unzip and an AAPL, which will give us a CSV. And then we move this, we can create a new directory in our project directory. So what I'm going to do is uh, make directory and then professional workspace spark course. So our spark video course, Python, and then a data directory. So I'm creating this directory within our project and then I'll move the CSV file to exactly this directory by using this shortcut. And if I go back to the IntelliJ now, we can see that we have the apple.csv file in the data directory. Now, if we inspect this csv file, we can see there's a header specifying the column names. So we have a date. So if we have one row for every date, which has been reported. And then there's an open price, which is the price in the beginning of this trading date, the high price, which is the highest price um, the stock has been on that trading day, the lowest price, close price, adjacency volume, a uh, close price, adjacent close price and the volume. Now we want to load this CSV file into a data frame using Spark. And therefore I will create a new file in our source folder. So let's create a new Python file and say load, load data.python and we're going to use this snake case as well. And what we need here is also a Spark session for, to begin with. So I can copy all of this over to our new source file. So we're going to create a new Spark session. We're going to call it um, load CSV, but we leave the master configuration as is. Now as Spark is the central entry point for our application into the Spark world, we can use the Spark session as well to read data generally. So we can use the Spark session, for example, to create a data frame from uh, some data we pass in manually, or we can use spark.read, which will give us a data frame reader. And the data frame reader um, implements many, many file formats. So we say spark.read, and then there is, for example, a ZSV loader. And if we look at this specification here, so it's trying to tell us what we can pass in here. And the first argument is a path. So we can pass in a path and it will try to load this pass path as a CSV file. And there are many, many more options. We're going to see later what else we can pass in, for example, the schema or the separator and so on. And for now, I just want to pass in the path what we would like to read. And here I will use a relative path um, relative to the project's root directory. So I will sim simply say data and then aapl.csv, which will try to, which it will resolve by going to the project directory data and then our CSV file. And this will give us back a data frame. And here we are simply going to introduce a new variable called df which is a shorthand for data frame. And now we can also in turn add this into multiple rows. So it's a little bit better readable. And on the DF, we can 
uh, call our first action. So on the DF, we can call show. That's a method which is implemented by the data frame class and will print the first 20 rows by default. So by default, 20 rows to the console if we run this. Now, if I hit this play button here now, it will execute our code here. So it will instantiate the Spark session, read the CSV file, and then print the first 20 rows to the console. And now we can see an error here. So it says path not found, um, path does not exist. And here it also prints the path it's trying to read. And we can see that it has not used the project's root directory um, to find this relative path, but rather, rather it's searching for the data directory within the source directory. So by setting our source directory um, by, or by creating our Python script in our source directory, it will execute this script right in this location. And now we have to go ahead and go for the run configurations. So I will edit the template. So every time I hit the, uh, the run button, these configuration will take effect. And here we can simply select the properties that the IDE will, will use if we're trying to execute our Python script. And here we can set the working directory. So what's the working directory if we hit the um, play button? And this should be the root directory of our project. So here we can say we go to professional and then workspace uh, spark video course python and this should be the working directory so if i hit apply every time i hit the play button it will use this templates and will set a different working directory so if i rerun our um, python script now it should be able to load this data directory from the working directory And here we go. So it has picked up the settings and it's printing the first 20 rows of our loaded CSV file to the console. Please go ahead and implement this in your own project.